My LSAT students ask me a lot if the uh, things you can do in the LSAT, you know, sort of the ways that you kind of game the test, for lack of a better way to put it, they ask me if those types of things apply in law school, because <laughs> it would be really cool if they did, right? Um, my answer to that question, unfortunately, is no. You can't do the things on a law school exam that you can do on the LSAT. And the reason basically goes back to the whole nature of what the LSAT is or what really any nationally administered standardized test is. Uh, those tests are designed to be uh, administered to a large number of people for many years in a row and to provide some sort of meaningful measurement uh, that can be applied to all of those people. Um, the law school exam is really designed to do something totally different. The law school exam is just designed so that your professor uh, can have some reasonable basis for saying who's good <laughs> at that class and who isn't. Um, you know, the torts exam that you take one year doesn't have to bear any relationship or similarity or uh, comparability, if that's a word, to the torts exam from the previous year or the torts exam in the following year. Now, they often do uh, bear those types of relationships, but it's not because anybody designs them that way. And uh, there really is no way to game law school in the same way that you can game the LSAT. But that doesn't mean that there's no way to game it at all. <laughs> so um, there is a way to game it, it's just a different way. Um, the way that you game uh, the law school exams is by understanding the professor who has created that exam. And uh, a few days or weeks ago, I'm not even sure exactly, well actually we can see right there on the screen, it's December 7th, so about a month and a half ago, I happened to run across this column um, in a particular law blog. By the way, if you don't read the um, law blog on the Wall Street Journal site, I strongly encourage you to do so. It's, it's a pretty good one. Anyway, in this uh, blog post or blog article, the author was discussing the different ways uh, that people create um, their exams and sort of uh, asked a bunch of prominent legal minds um, what they look for in the responses to their exams. And what I find really interesting is um, what the the feedback that the professors gave is uh, very different and in many cases something it sounds like it would be a perfect response for one professor would be an awful response to another professor. Let me give you a couple examples of what I mean. So, um, By the way the link to this is uh, just below this video on my uh, blog but um, I want to scroll down here and show you where we can find these things. So alright so here for instance um, this professor at Yale said uh, that a problem with people is they throw everything into the answer rather than think about what belongs and what doesn't. Okay. Um, now notice down here, this professor says that uh, um, the ideal law school exam answer is rigorous and deep. In fact, let me see if I can scroll down without losing my markings. I don't think I can. Uh, technological shortcomings. There you go. Anyway, so we'll come back to that in a minute. But so, uh, so Adam Winkler here says that uh, it references every applicable standard, right? Every branch in the decision tree follows a sound structure, and so on and so forth. So notice this phrase, like every applicable standard and test, right? That's what this guy is looking for. But um, the other people, like uh, this uh, professor up here, this professor says, don't repeat the facts, don't tell me the law apply the law to the facts. Now, they're not directly contradicting each other um, in a way that might be obvious to a non-law student, but if you are a law student and you're watching this, you probably say, hey, wait a second, if I'm not supposed to uh, tell the facts and the law to one guy, but the other guy wants me to go through every single standard and test, which is basically a way to say go through every single fact, uh, every, every single law. Um, clearly, these two people are looking for very different things, right? Obviously, they are. There's, uh, there's really no way around that whatsoever. Um, now, check this out as well. Here's another example of these contradictions. So this professor up here says the thing you're supposed to do is apply the law to the facts, but then the next one um, at Creighton Law School says um, you have to do more than apply the law to the facts, right? Uh, it says all the other answers are going to do that. He says instead that you have to do these other two things, and you have to say um, what does the question turn on and uh, give the opinion of whether the result uh, is good or whatever, okay? So this is another thing, actually. In addition to the question of how much you mention when you write the uh, exam response, whether you should mention all the laws and all the facts or just some of them or not any of them and just do the application, in addition to that sort of thing, you also have this question different professors have uh, different answers to, and that is the question of um, do I give an answer or not? 
Okay, so here this person says, um, give me your opinion of whether the result is this or that, right? Um, this person says there is no right answer. If we look up uh, a little bit earlier, we can see that someone says um, there is a right answer and I want to hear what you think the right answer is because not every answer is created equal. Right? And then this person says get to maybe, meaning show me a bunch of different arguments on all different sides and uh, and don't really tell me which one you expect to win because nobody actually knows which one is going to win and so on and so forth. So again, very, very different, uh, very contradictory <laughs> responses given by these law professors. Um, check this one out too, actually. I wanted to point this one out before I forgot. So here we already talked about how the UCLA professor says, please go through every applicable thing and tell me every single thing that matters. Um, then this person here from Columbia, he says, a lot of people flood you with pages of four-factor tests, can nonsense, and ridiculous results. Right? So these four-factor tests, by the way, these are the exact same tests that the previous guy said he wanted to see. Uh, Professor Wu at Columbia says, definitely don't show me that because it doesn't matter. Right? So again, these are only, you know, this is a handful of professors taken from a handful of prestigious schools. This is by no means a cross-section of all the different professors that are out there. But if these, uh, you know, handful of professors already can't agree and already have pretty good reasons for wanting what it is they want, I hope you're starting to see there is no single type of response that every professor is going to want. And this is where a lot of people run into trouble. A lot of people uh, when they try to figure out how to write their responses, they want to come up with what they think is the ideal uh, law school exam response and just sort of practice that method and apply it equally to all classes with all professors. You cannot do that. What you have to do is figure out what each professor is looking for. Uh, and it actually goes way deeper than just you know their own opinions of um, whether you should demonstrate uh, some sort of conviction as to what the answer to the question probably is, or whether you should remain totally agnostic on it, uh, whether you should mention every single applicable legal standard or not, whether you should mention every case that could possibly touch or not. Um, it goes way deeper than that. We can also figure out what types of uh, formats the professors like in their responses. You know, a lot of things, uh, a lot of times too, the professor says they want to see a certain thing, but then if you look at the um, people who actually get the good results, they don't do what the professor said that they wanted, you know. Uh, it would not surprise me at all to learn that a lot of these professors have given A's to responses that didn't do exactly what they say in these paragraphs they want to see responses doing. So there is a way to game uh, this stuff. I actually, you know, talk about it in my uh, law school admissions and law school survival uh, courses, but you don't necessarily need that. Just be aware there's a way to game this like there's a way to game anything, but the point I want to make is you don't game it the same way you game the LSAT. You game the LSAT by realizing that it has to do the same things every single time it's given and by focusing in on those essential, unchangeable uh, components of the test. You game law school exams by uh, sort of getting inside the professor's head in a way um, that maybe they don't always make obvious that you should, <laughs> you know, and in a way that might not be... Um, sort of obvious, I guess, to a lot of people, but that's kind of what you do, is you just sort of get in there and say, okay, uh, now that I understand this person, what do they want to see me write, and let me write that. Um, so, still gameable, just gameable in a different way. And uh, that's all I really have to say about that. By the way, if you haven't checked out uh, this blog post on the WSJ site, again, check the link out. Uh, it should be right below this video on my blog. Thanks. Bye-bye.